a bumpy start in life. The alpaca baby has got a swollen knee and has to be x-rayed. I hope it's nothing serious. It'd be bad if it was a fracture. Mugambi is just one day old. Giraffe babies have to be able to walk shortly after birth, otherwise they are easy prey. It's important that they suckle to obtain the energy needed. The vets approach animal keeper Thomas. Last night he was still drinking at about quarter to six. I haven't seen him drink today yet, but he seems fit, so I imagine he has. The overall impression of Itosha's child is very good. He looks great. He's very alert, very curious, checking everything out. Couldn't be better. Mugambi's mother, Itosha, has to leave the little one for a short time so that the vets can inoculate him undisturbed. To be kicked by a fully grown giraffe can end in death. Adriana, the vet, is especially interested in one thing. I'd like to have a look at the navel. That's a typical problem with young animals. It's not closed at first, so germs can easily enter just after birth. He's pretty curious and astonishingly calm. I'm sure that'll change in a moment when he feels the little prick. Adriana vaccinates the one meter 80 tall baby against contagious diseases. Many animal fans would love to be able to embrace a giraffe baby. You too, I'm sure. But Thomas weighs up. Theoretically, it's nice to touch him. But that situation wasn't very nice for him. It hurt, and he doesn't know that it's important for him. But it's true, who gets the chance to touch a baby giraffe? Apart from Adriana. Oh, well, now he knows I can annoy him too. Now Etosha's on her way over again. Of course, she has to find out what we've done with her baby. You can see she's a very experienced mother. I think she knows that we wouldn't do anything nasty. But she still has to look out for him, and quite right too. That's why she stands so close to him. She's a picture book mother giraffe. OK, now we'll leave you both in peace. As Mugambi is healthy and strong, today he's allowed outside for the very first time. Nile crocodiles can become four to six meters long. At the beginning of their lives, they are only just a few centimeters. Oh no! Oh, isn't that sweet? Guido, come here and take a look. The croc's looking out. Guido and Marion have put four eggs into the incubator. That was about three months ago. That's how long it takes from egg laying to hatching. A real live crocodile snout. Hi, handsome. He looks a bit messy. Look at him breathe. You can see how he resorbs his yolk sac and how the whole egg goes up and down with each breath. That's fantastic. I'll pick it up. The baby has to fight its own way out of the egg. In fact, now the mother would come and break open the rest of the egg. Look at his baby teeth. And at the front, you can see the egg tooth, which it uses to tear open the shell, the little bobble. OK, he's breathing. That's the most important thing. I'll put him back in and he can do the rest himself. Just how long it will take, no one knows. 
It all depends on the little fellow's nutritional status. As we don't know how much yolk is absorbed, it could take two days until he's completely free. It could also take 10 minutes. It varies enormously. The yolk lends him the necessary strength with which to break the egg. The yolk is ingested through the umbilical cord and lands first of all in his stomach. So he's got something to live on for the first few days. And that's really important because if he hatched now, the umbilical cord would be torn off. He would survive, but he'd have fewer nutrients for the next few days. The clutch of a female crocodile can consist of as many as 80 eggs. All of the offspring hatch within a few days. The shells of the other eggs here still appear to be fully intact. Basically, you should be able to see something by now. But with artificial breeding in the incubator, there's no mother around to urinate on the eggs. The mother's urine helps soften the shell. So the shell here is very strong. The eggshell is also softened by the animal's breathing. Both play a part. Let's leave him in peace. In Africa, female crocodiles lay their eggs in burrows that they dig out with their hind legs and guard well. The two-week-old alpaca baby has a limp. Volker and Ben want to bring it to the vets. Fourteen days ago, the alpaca baby with the white face was born. And for the last week or so, it's been lame, the right front leg. The vet had a look at it, but it hasn't got any better. That's why she's coming today with an X-ray machine. Alpacas are camels from the South American Andes. Wild alpacas no longer exist. They have been bred domestically for thousands of years because of their wool. Volker wishes that he knew more about the degree of the alpaca baby's injury. It would be bad if it was a fracture. Then he'd have to have a plaster cast. Maybe it's just a sprain or something. I just hope it's nothing serious. But we'll see that on the X-ray. Oh, aren't you a sweetie? The vet with the mobile X-ray machine hasn't arrived as yet. The patient with a lame leg has to wait. Like all camels, alpacas have long, slender legs and an equally shaped neck. Only old world camels from Asia and Africa have got humps, not those from the new world, America. Hello, can I have a look? Your vet said it was his right front leg? Right front, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think it's his right knee. Seems to have a swelling there. Yes, it's swollen. Take a few steps, huh? Oh, can't walk. It hurts. He doesn't want to put pressure on it. Has he got a name? Anyone want to suggest one? Quickly. Me? I should think one up. Yes, Hermann. Franz. Franz it is. In the course of the afternoon, at 6 p.m. at the latest, I should have a result. Until then, I wouldn't recommend any painkillers or anything for the inflammation. Once we know what's wrong, we can deal with it. Right, we'll bring the little one back to the enclosure. No more injections. 
However, Michael will get the results and then probably have another look at it on the computer. Yes, of course. Four metre tall Rothschild giraffe Itasha is more than double the size of her son. After the shock of the injection this morning, Mugambi can now look forward to a more pleasing surprise. Today, little Mugambi can go into the enclosure for the first time. That's always an exciting moment. He knows the family members and the house, but not the enclosure. We have to watch how he reacts and take a few safety measures. There's a trench with water and a dry trench. These are dangerous areas. We don't want him to have an accident. Giraffes can run at speeds of 50 kilometers an hour. Mugambi's not that fast yet, but he shouldn't injure himself, of course. Now I'll have another look, although we did check everything when we were cleaning up. The impalas, kudus and marabus are already outside. And to be on the safe side, I'll check that nothing has changed. We don't want anything to go wrong. Neither the antelopes nor the enclosure show any abnormalities. It's all looking good. In the wild, the calves accompany their mothers after a few hours. Mugambi is now allowed to do the same. OK, my lovelies, the enclosure's not dangerous. Don't do anything silly out there and come back in one piece. Now, off you go. A fallen branch, which could become a tripping hazard, or an object thrown into the enclosure by a visitor, could put an animal off its stride. Thomas has excluded this from the outset. Make way for Mugambi. He's very cautious. He checks everything out and follows his mum around. That's much better than if he raced around the enclosure without knowing it. It would be great if he carried on like that, then hopefully he'll do something without his mum and have a look round. As long as he does everything carefully, I'm very happy. And then he does it. Then I hope that he comes back in OK later on. That'll be the next exciting thing. Giraffe children stay in their mother's care for one and a half years. Crocodiles store their eggs in sand ditches. When the babies hatch, the mothers carry them in their mouths into the water. A baby has now hatched from one of the four eggs that Guido and Marion put in the incubator. Just put the light on, please. The young Nile crocodile has freed itself completely of eggshell. Hold him tight. Don't let him jump out. Let him bite you first. I was just about to say he's biting me already. Great. Should I take it out? Yes, let's get it out. It's a Nile crocodile. It wants to weigh a thousand kilos and be seven meters long. The umbilical cord, wonderful. That'll dry out and fall off, and then this here will close again. 
Guido doesn't want to put the reptile babies in the basin with the adult animals. Crocodiles are cannibals. In the wild, 80 to 90 percent of the young animals are eaten by their own kind. We'll bring them up here behind the scenes and probably give them to other zoos later. It's got a real dinosaur face. The baby doesn't have to be fed during the first days. It has taken in nutritious yolk through the umbilical cord. We'll just wait for a week. Then his yolk is used up and we can begin feeding him small grasshoppers with tweezers. I don't even think about milk. They aren't suckled by their mothers. Even if he thinks I'm his mother, all he wants is a grasshopper. Whether a male or female develops out of the crocodile egg depends entirely on the ambient temperature. Females are created at temperatures below 30 degrees. And as of 34 degrees, only males. This Nile crocodile baby is a young lady, well, of sorts. In mammals, genes define the sex. Penguins are birds that can't fly. Their element is water, in which they can move around at great speeds. They breed in caves on land. Rangers Dave and Sebastian look in regularly on the Humboldt penguin babies to check on their condition. After eight days, their eyes are slowly beginning to open. Uh, right side, a bit more than the left. Uh, the size difference is really noticeable. On day one, there was hardly anything in my hand, and now he fills out my entire hand. Before long, I mean, he's going to look like a big round ball. It won't look so pretty anymore. Just be a huge ball with a very small head. But that's the way he's uh, developing. The penguin baby has downy feathers. It is not watertight. In the first weeks, one of the parents takes care of the offspring non-stop. Partner heads off searching for food. The parents alternate their duties. We weigh them because we want to know whether he's growing and how he's doing health-wise. Some parents don't feed the babies properly. This is why we monitor their weight on a daily basis. If he's actually losing weight, we can treat him in time. But sometimes, of course, they're quite simply ill. This fluffy little guy looks fit and healthy. 284 grams he weighs. My God. He's gained weight. A lot, actually. So on day one, he weighed 112, and now he weighs 284. The penguin chick eats fish, but not normal fish, rather a fish pulp that the parents regurgitate. This little penguin is gaining weight daily, which means his parents are taking good care of him. Penguin couples are often faithful to one another their entire lives and breed together annually. Those with kids receive preferential treatment from Dave and Sebastian. The parent that sits on the eggs, or the young animals, uh, gets an extra portion of fish from us. They don't leave the young behind to go and eat, but the little one has to be well taken care of. Humboldt penguins live on the Pacific coast of South America, where the cold Humboldt current carries in huge numbers of swarm fish as food. This year, Dave and Sebastian weigh and take care of five chicks. Uh, this is the penguin that I saw for the first time as it broke its way through the eggshell. First there was just this hole and he came out at night when we were all gone. But it was really nice to watch how he fought his way into the light of light.
Next, they fetch a little pipsqueak. The two of them are brother and sister with a significant size difference. Humboldt penguins mostly have two chicks. Hundred and fifty-four? Yeah. Yeah, he's gained fifty-two grams. That much? That's amazing. So, now the little one. He hatched two days later, so he's that much smaller. But he hasn't gained any weight either, has he? Oh, he's lost weight. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, six grams, actually. It's not so dramatic yet, but the problem is that the parents always feed the chick that screams the loudest. And, and that is the larger of the youngsters. In the wild, it's very rare that the second one grows up with the first. Penguins are colony breeders. A single couple would not propagate. The urge to do this only occurs in a group. In large colonies, the individual is better protected from enemies. But it requires skill to be able to find your own cave and chicks when you've just returned from a food search in the sea. Each young animal has its own special call. Um, it chirps and the parents memorize how that sounds. And when both parents leave the cave and they no longer know if they have to take the second right, it's the chirp that leads them to the right child. The dot pattern on their breasts distinguishes the adult penguins from one another. Like fingerprints and humans, the arrangement of the black spots is also unique. The alpaca kid overcame the trip to the vet's well. Nonetheless, the knee is swollen and painful. The little one keeps on lying down, which is unnatural behavior. The vet and the keeper meet to review the situation. The alpaca lad was x-rayed in the morning. His condition has not improved. I've seen the x-rays. There's nothing broken. That's the good news. But he obviously has pain in his wrist. Oh, keep still. Today we're going to try another inflammation inhibitor and painkillers. The leg seems sprained or dislocated. There's no result. But it is swollen. It's a little warm, too. It obviously hurts him a lot. Is he drinking? Yes, but he lies down a lot when the others are playing. Do you want to under the skin? But there's not much room on an alpaca. Please be careful. Alpacas are pretty skinny. All that appears fat is wool. And in our little patient, the knee. As soon as he's on the ground, he returns to his relief posture. That's clever. Because his leg hurts, he doesn't use it. He has to have an injection every day now. And in a few days, we'll assess it all again. Just wait, it has to heal. At least it's not broken. These three chicks are of a type of swan indigenous only to South America. The black-necked swan. Their name reveals that their appearance will soon change. Our black-necked swan chicks are just two weeks old and we're rearing them by hand. Uh, Mum and Dad are first-time parents and they're still a bit overwhelmed. These swans are hardly ever seen in zoos and so we're really happy that the little ones have survived. I'll clean up quick so they can munch on some green stuff in peace. In the animal world, one distinguishes between nestling and flight bird. In their initial life phase, Nestlings need their protective breeding place. The little swans swim around in the water with their parents right from day one. They're um, what you call precocial birds. Their feathers are immediately fit for the water. And uh, when they're exhausted, 
the chicks simply climb onto the back feathers of the parents and swim piggyback with them. Should danger arise, then they'll be safe there. Right then, you cuties. Have you gone into hiding? The chicks like it warm and cosy, whether with or without their parents. I don't really have to play substitute mum. Uh, there are three of them, and they really are well fed and look healthy too. I think they have the best chances to grow up, and they really are very sweet. Little swans just look so furry and so cute. Mugambi has spent the day outside. The giraffe child has experienced exciting hours immediately after being born just yesterday. Thomas hopes that he will now return to his stable just as fleet-footed as he ventured out of it. Now I'll try and get them back in. The little one's outside for the first time, which means that he doesn't know where to go. Only his parents know that. I hope he just follows his food, meaning his mother. If not, it could take a while. That's why we're attempting this now, even though it's relatively early. If not, I can just try again later. Good. In six years, Mugambi will be fully grown. Bulls can reach sizes of up to six meters. Despite their enormously long necks, giraffes, like humans, have just seven cervical vertebras. Etosha, Leila, Chali, Mugambi, there you are. Mugambi, watch what the grown-ups are doing. Then just copy them. But will our young giraffe dare to go through the gate? Well done. Just like an adult. Yes, keep going. In you go. Great. Brilliant. Really good. While Mugambi will soon probably sleep for a few hours after his exhausting day, grown giraffes do without recreational breaks. They manage with just half an hour's sleep. Then they are always alert should an enemy turn up. I really didn't expect him to come in so easily. Just like the adults. Now he's slumping, he's already folded his neck. He's had a lovely day, and so have we. He'll sleep well tonight.